Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. 2020 has finally rolled into history. Uh, it was a wild year and 2021 is only a few weeks old, but already we can see that it's going to be a humdinger. As such, many people have been asking me questions like, oh my god, is the internet going to be shut down? Or, uh, oh my god, are we going to have long-term power outages? And uh, you know, can I get a backup generator? Should I get solar panels and a battery bank? Uh, you know, if I want to preserve food, well, if I'm on temporary power, can I, you know, can I run like a, a refrigerator and a chest freezer? And one of the common uh, misconceptions that I've been hearing is that uh, chest freezers actually consume gobs and gobs of electricity. So I decided to do a comparison between a standard side-by-side -side upright American fridge and a large, you know, a full-size chest freezer, a deep freezer. The question is, which one of these actually uses more power? And the answer may surprise you. So here we have our standard large side-by-side -side American style fridge and a large chest freezer. And we can assume that these are about equal in volume. Now, of course, the upright fridge, on the right side you have a refrigeration space that's kept at about 6 degrees C, which is around 42 Fahrenheit. And on the left side you have the freezer space, which is about kept at about minus 18 C, which is somewhere around uh, 0 Fahrenheit. The chest freezer, on the other hand, the entire volume, which is equal to the entire volume of the American-style fridge, uh, the chest freezer is, all, the whole thing is deep freeze, minus 18 C. So you'd kind of look at this and you'd go, well, right, obviously the chest freezer is going to use more power because you have the full volume and it has to keep it all much colder, so it's a no-brainer, right? Well, not exactly. So the first thing we're going to consider is the initial cost of these things. The American-style fridge is going to be about twice the price of an equivalent size chest freezer. The American style fridge, you might be able to get one for eight, nine, eight or nine hundred, maybe a thousand dollars. The chest freezer, typically you can find a basic full-size one for four hundred dollars or even less. So in terms of initial cost, the chest freezer is actually going to, to save you money. But what we're most concerned about is sort of annual operating costs, which translates into how much electricity is this thing going to consume when I'm running on backup power. So. Okay, if we look at the nameplates on the back of both of these gizmos, we see that the upright American fridge is going to consume a maximum of 300 watts, whereas the chest freezer is only going to consume a maximum of 200 watts. Now this doesn't mean, these are sort of nameplate ratings, so this doesn't mean that the units are actually consuming this full amount of power all the time. It means that's the, the absolute maximum that they would consume. But of course, we're kind of concerned with annual operating costs. You know how much, how many, you know how many kilowatt hours uh, are, are each of these going to use? Because that's more relevant, say, when you're powering your fridge or chest freezer from a generator. And it turns out that the chest freezer actually uses 33% fewer kilowatt hours than the upright American fridge. Now you might be going, well, duh, Scotty, because if the fridge uses 300 watts max and the chest freezer uses 200 watts max. The chest freezer uses one-third less, so of course, if they're running at the same amount, then obviously the chest freezer will also use one-third less power. But it's not quite that simple, because as we just talked about, well, the chest freezer has a much larger volume and has to stay at a colder temperature, so you'd think that it would actually have to run more. So, say, if both the fridge and freezer were using 200 watts, well, the, the deep freezer should be using it should be having uh, longer cycles and more cycles to keep the food, food cold, right? And if that's the case, then the chest freezer should use more power, but it doesn't. So why doesn't it? Well, <clears throat> here we have our American fridge, and what happens when you open the doors? Well, of course, we know that cold air sinks and hot air rises, so every time you open the doors, all that nice cool air just sort of flows out at the bottom of the fridge or the freezer, depending on which side you open, it all just kind of flows out onto the floor, and warm air goes in, you close the doors, and the fridge has more work to do to cool all that warm air and make sure that the food inside stays either uh, refrigerated or frozen. The chest freezer, on the other hand, is a little bit different because it's basically a very large insulated box with a lid. And when you open the lid, the nice frozen air stays, well, nice and frozen. Everything inside stays colder. 
Uh, you don't get any cold air spilling out as much as you do with an upright fridge. And of course, less air, less warm air will get in the top. The other thing to consider here is that when you have an upright fridge in a kitchen, you're opening and closing the doors far more frequently than you are with the chest freezer. So on top of the basic design being an advantage, uh, a chest freezer is something where you're going to put a lot of food, keep it deep frozen, and maybe once a day you might open the lid to take something out to cook it, whereas with a fridge, the fridge is being opened and closed many times a day, the freezer maybe not so much, but every time any door on that fridge is opened, you're, you're basically losing energy and the compressor has to run more to cool everything down again. Another thing to consider is that the upright fridge usually has an auto defrost cycle. Uh, that means that you will never have to worry about ice building up on the walls uh, inside the freezer. And of course, chest freezers, except for the higher end, more expensive ones, most low end full size chest freezers do not have an auto defrost cycle. That means that usually once a year, you have to open the, the chest freezer, take everything out, chip the thick layer of ice off the sides, put everything back in, and boom, you're good for another year. Uh, because this is annoying, modern upright fridges and, uh, in fact, pretty much all refrigerators for kitchens these days, they have an auto defrost cycle. And the problem with that is that the auto defrost cycle actually uses way more power than just simply the compressor running and trying to cool the food inside down. And that's one of the main reasons why our upright fridge had a, had a maximum power consumption of 300 watts, whereas the chest freezer was a maximum of only 200 watts because that auto defrost cycle is basically a power hog. Finally, you also have to consider things like, uh, you know, you have your upright fridge in your kitchen and it has a fancy ice maker and it has motors and duh, 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 and all this fancy stuff. Uh, you have a water dispenser. Um, you might have an internet connected fridge with a giant touchscreen panel that lets you post on Twitter while you're getting something from your fridge, you know, you're taking out your orange juice and your whatever. Uh, so modern refrigerators for modern kitchens typically have uh, more whiz-bang features and many of those whiz-bang features actually use more power. A chest freezer is basically just a chest freezer. There's really nothing fancy about it. You set the temperature, you plug it in, you're done. So yeah, if you're looking to uh, get a lot of food and store it long term, uh, don't worry about getting a chest freezer. As it turns out, they do use about one-third less power even in the long term. The instantaneous power usage is one-third of a modern upright fridge. Uh, all of these numbers mean that if you're, say, running on generator power or from your, your power wall or something, uh, yes, chest freezers are actually more efficient than refrigerators. And, of course, you can store more food in them to boot so you can eat well in the middle of the apocalypse, which is nice. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.